you know, I think in some ways for each of us, our little one is, is the Messiah, is, is the best in us. I'm Celeste Little, the senior editor of my parents, and we're so grateful to have you here, Carrie Washington. Um, you have some awesome things happening with Audible right now. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on? So my company, Simpson Street, which is named after the street in the Bronx that my mom grew up on, um, we just signed a really exciting deal with Audible to develop narrative podcasts. So we're going to be doing storytelling in the audio space. And I love this for so many reasons. But one of them is that my mom talks a lot about growing up on Simpson Street and listening to audio plays on the radio. Um, and and so it's really, it's so exciting to kind of do this nostalgic work and bring storytelling back to a kind of more simplified, pure form and, and to be telling really exciting stories. Yeah. You kind of think about like the family gathering around the radio and like listening. Yes. Yeah. 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 Really I know your first release is The Prophecy. Can you mm -hmm. talk about why you decided to do that and like what drew you to that story? There's a lot of reasons why we're starting with the prophecy. One is that I'm in this one. I'm <laughs> not in all of them, but I wanted to start with one that I'm in to really kind of stand behind the partnership. And I'm, I'm so grateful to Audible for their creative support and um, all kinds of support. The writer, Randy McKinnon, came and pitched this idea to my company and we were floored. Like I couldn't stop thinking about it. The premise of this, of this series is what if the stories that we've been reading about in the Bible for hundreds of years, what if these weren't fables or tales about things that have happened in the past? What if these were stories about things that were gonna happen in the future? And what if that future was now? Um, so what if we were living in biblical times? We are living in biblical times, which to me, because of kind of all of the upheaval that's happening in the world, it felt so possible and so intriguing to explore this concept and this idea and such a really wonderful way to kind of engage with biblical ideas and biblical learnings in a modern way. There's a quote at the very beginning, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. Can you speak about how that kind of connects what we're going through now in society and, and the story that you guys are telling? In my opinion, the stories of the Bible are timeless. And that's why in so many ways, this idea works because these are stories about humanity, about right and wrong, about trying to kind of hold on to what's best in us and, and elevate ourselves to meet the best version of us. So I don't think there's an expiration date on those ideas, on the challenge to fight evil and reach for good and to love each other and to look out for each other and to hook into faith to survive really challenging times. And these are, I think, for a lot of people in real life, challenging times. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and. Dr. Virginia Edwards is like this really powerful and brave character. And we, we kind of make that comparison between her and Mary. Can you talk about what that was like, you know, voicing this character as a mom and like thinking about, you know, like standing up for your children and, and what kind of lessons that you want to, you know, share with them? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think every parent feels the weight and pressure of wanting to protect your little one, right? The responsibility of wanting to make sure that the world is a safe place, as safe as possible for your child. I think having this child, exploring the idea that this child could be the Messiah, just really kind of elevates that idea and reminds us of how precious children are. You know, I think in some ways for each of us, our little one is, is the Messiah, is, is the best in us. I have a toddler, so I don't have to explain anything yet, but, um, <laughs> but we see people protesting. We have mm. stories about like the end of the world, the end of times. These are, mm. these are scary concepts. And we kind of want our kids to be able to, you know, see what's going on in the world and be brave, but we don't want to terrify them. So you know, if, if parents are listening to this and they're, you know, they're making the comparisons, what, what can we tell them um, for their children? It's such a great question. I mean, I, I don't know that I have the perfect answer for that, but I do think knowing that these ideas are timeless, knowing that people have been struggling with the ideas of good and evil 
since the beginning of time is helpful. It's a helpful idea to know because it makes us feel not so alone and that the human race continues, right? And that our job is to kind of align ourselves with as much good as possible and figure out how to cultivate that and hook into that so that we can be a part of that positive trajectory, positive change. And just to know that it's it's not easy. This is not the first time in humanity where people are struggling and things feel really, really challenging and it won't be the last. So making sure that we figure out how to love each other and love ourselves and do good and be as good as possible to ourselves and each other like that, that I think is, is the the task at hand. How did you make choices about the rest of the series? How did you guys decide what kind of titles you wanted to present and like what the what the meaning was for that? You know, for me as a producer, fundamentally, I'm drawn to projects that I would want to watch or listen to. <laughs> so it's kind of like, if I would enjoy that, that's the primary question. But I think also we're always looking for ways to center marginalized stories. So I think you know, for me, being a woman, being a person of color, being a Black woman in particular, there have been times throughout my career where I have felt like the accessory to somebody else's story. When in my life, I'm the central character in the story of my life. I'm the hero of the journey of my life. So we really look for projects that allow folks who belong to marginalized communities for various reasons. Maybe it's because they're a woman or because they're a member of the LGBTQ community or because they're a person of color, or because maybe they're in the disabilities community, like whatever it is to make sure that that person also has access to being centered in a story because everybody deserves to see themselves at the center of a story, but also because we're better as a, as a community, as a human community, when we also are able to compassionately step into other people's stories. Absolutely. Kindred is really about um, centering the Black family, centering Black communities, because, you know, we're, we're able to look at other communities and understand ourselves through their stories, and we should be able to do the same. So I think that's, that's super important. What's next for you? Like, what's coming up? What can we look forward to? I'm really excited for audiences to hear the prophecy. I'm really proud of what we were able to create and was really kind of blown away by what's possible in an audio landscape. Like I, I just feel like, wow, I, it's crazy. I, I felt challenged and inspired to do some of the work I'm most proud of as an actor in this medium, which is really exciting to have out in the world. Um, but my company, we also have another series on YouTube called Street You Grew Up On, which is um, because the company is named after the street in the Bronx that my mother grew up on, Simpson Street. We talked to lots of people that I love and admire about the street that they grew up on. We also have a new series coming to Hulu this fall called Reasonable Doubt. I'm really, really excited for audiences to see that. It's It's a powerful drama about a really powerful um, and inspiring and flawed and sexy Black woman um, and her family. So I'm, I'm really thrilled about that. That'll also be out this fall. So lots of stuff going on, lots of really exciting projects and really proud and grateful that we're having the opportunity to do work that we feel so inspired by. 